So I'm back. Um, it seems like I'm back every other week to talk about these housewives. Um, yeah, I just didn't get a chance to try to do anything last week because shit, I was tired. <laughs> Motherfucking tired. Okay. A bitch fucked around and got an old on the low. I'm be I be tired when it's on my day off. So anyway, I was home today. I got a chance to watch it at the original airing time. So of course that's a little earlier for me because I'll be up for a while from now. So, just kind of want to talk about tonight's episode. Um, I didn't take any notes. So, it'll probably be a little patchy. Try to get this under like five or six, seven minutes. So, let's go. First thing I saw was Todd and Candy talking about baby duties and, you know, getting ready for the baby and all the stuff they still have to do. I'm so excited and congratulations to them. I know the baby's here now, so congratulations. Um, so, I'm... I'm interested to see how that's going to work out. What I think would be cute is if Bravo decides to do a little slight spinoff. Because, you know, the candy spinoffs, they make good ratings. So, hey, Bravo, you heard it here first. Let the dog get a little piece of that check. Thank you. Or, you know, a shout out or something, you know. Give me a little bit and I'll work with the rest, okay? But, yeah, I think it would be... um. A cute little spinoff for, you know, to see how they're adjusting to new baby life. You know, called the Tuckers Plus One or Plus Two or, you know, whatever. All right, all tucked in with the Tuckers. You know, something cute like that. Whatever. Anyway, Ty, having never had a baby, like he said, from scratch, this is going to be interesting because Candy, uh, she only has that one child, I'm sure. Just based on how she presents herself on the show, she's probably she was probably that cousin that had to babysit no matter what, had to change her little cousin's diapers, that kind of thing. So she's kind of adjusted to having new babies. Todd, on the other hand, you know, boys generally don't have that responsibility. Um, I was probably well in my 20s before I ever changed the diapers, and it's only been a few. So, yeah. Interested to see how that's going to go. Um, Todd, like, he's excited. You can tell that he's excited because, like he said, he's Googled things about the baby and how to take care of the baby, etc. Yada, yada, yada. So, yeah. I'm excited to see how that's going to go. Now, the bullshit he was talking about with the, um, uh, the schedule. Now, bitch, I don't see how you think it's finna go. You think you really finna go and stay out and party and go hang out with your girlfriends, your Judas, your buddies. All night and Candy gonna be the only one at home to take care of this baby bitch, please. Not my nigga Candy. No, 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 nigga. No. That's not how that's gonna work out. I, I can pretty much assure you of that. No, it's gonna be equal as fuck. Or, 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 or. You're gonna have to deal with Mama Joyce living in. She probably already stayed here. So you might wanna get on the good foot with this shit, okay? Okay. Um, on to the next part I th that I remember seeing would be, um, Phaedra saying she's ready to push forward with the divorce. I'm just interested right now because, you know, of course this is filmed months in advance. Where are they with the divorce as of right this second? Um, I, I, I understand why she wants to push forward with the divorce for, you know, obvious reasons. But what I do not like is, um, the constant digs at, um... What's the child's name? Apollo. I don't like the constant digs at him. Because you knew who he was when you married him. People are who they are when we meet them. It's up to us to see them. And not what we want to see about them. It, if, it, if from the beginning you could see him, you may not have, never, you may not have never ever married him. But now that you see him, stop digging at him because if you look in hindsight, which is always 2020, you knew who he was. You knew. So stop with the digs in the confessionals talking about, you know, he was so selfish trying to, you know, look out for himself and this, this, this. He was who he was and it's okay. So I commend you for pushing forward. I did like the fact that in the last couple of episodes they've showed um, the children getting the chance to talk to him. Well, the oldest one, I forget his name. I forget the names. I, I get them mixed up, so I won't. 
getting a chance to talk to him and mail letters to him. So I do commend you for that, keeping the um, lines of communications open with him and his children. Because there's a lot of time, we black people, and I use that lightly because, you know, normally I consider myself a Christian, God-fearing, white woman. Hello. Um, yeah, we get the rap for the minute the baby daddy does not do something you like, you cut off all communications from him and the child, thusly making the child feel away, not even knowing, not even caring about it most times. The child ends up feeling away because my daddy wasn't around or he didn't come around then. And the flip of things I've seen it happen to where once a child gets old enough to understand, they be like they flip on the mother and be like, You wouldn't let him come around. So I commend Phaedra for that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember what else the hell I saw. The bigger part was Kim's um beatless brunch. Now be once you're a lady of a certain age, now Kim feels she has bad track. Kim feels she is like one of my favorites. I respect people who are real actors, who were actors and actresses and in their professions long before reality TV came about or became as popular and we became as, and the big scheme of television networks became so heavily saturated with reality TV. I mean, because I remember back when, you know, the real world was the reality show. Now every channel, every station, every network has two, three, four, five, ten um, reality shows. So yeah, um, mental. I got to plug in. I'm back. I um, just had to plug in the camera. Battery was about to die. Anyhow, back to like I was saying about reality television, and um, well, basically how I respect real actors and people who were doing this thing long before. Reality TV was the hit that it is. Um, yeah, so I really respect Kim Fields. So I, she's my favorite housewife this quarter. Next to Kim, next to Candy. Her and Candy are my favorite housewives. Um, just based on what the show shows. What the show depicts them as. Um, of course, nothing against any of the other girls. Because like I always say, Cynthia had a modeling career long before we knew about her. So she was still in her field of choice long before we knew about it. Although she doesn't currently model as much, we, she was still doing it way back in the back back. Phaedra was an attorney long before we knew about Phaedra Park's attorney at law, the housewife. So she was in her field. Even Kenya Moore. I have seen a few of her movies. And she was doing this before she became a housewife. However... I think she's letting the housewife taint her brand. Because nobody's going to really want... Okay, girl, let me not get on that because she might respond back and... I ain't got no time. None for that. I still respect her as an actress. Like I said, she was doing it before she was a housewife. Anyway, back to the show at hand. That was just such a long tangent. I feel like I left somebody out, but... You know, hey, I'm sorry. Um, the brunch. I understood where she was coming from with the brunch. It was supposed to be an effort to let... It would have... I think it would, I think her thinking as a director-producer, it would have been a good segment for the show to let people see what reality stars really A look like, really, you know, do in their downtime. Because being a reality TV star has become such a job to being an actor because you got to amp up and put and push yourself to be so many people that you're not. I think it was I think from the director's point of view that would have made a really good segment to really see the girls with no makeup, no extra hair. I mean I think it was a little excessive for them to say, well let me take out these boobs. Cause bitch if you knew if, if people could have um breast implants so they could take in and out on a day to day, bitch, it'd be so many big titty holes walking around here. I'm just saying. It would be a heap of them, okay? So, yeah, I think um, it was a good idea. At the same time, I do like that. At least they didn't show it on the show. If it did happen, I, I like that she didn't beat anybody up too hard about coming in their makeup. Shout-outs to Sheree for doing as instructed. And Sheree's skin, look, skin looked wonderful. It looked excellent. She was very, She's actually very pretty. She looks... She almost looks better outside of her makeup than sometimes she do with a whole beat face. Hey, but that may just be dependent upon the makeup artist who's doing her face. Hmm. 
I understood once Candy said that, you know, ain't nobody gonna see her with these dark bags except her husband and her kids. I ain't even mad at that. Because she was still real natural. It was real light. So I don't think anybody went to the extreme and did the exact opposite of what she said. Um, of course, Kenya had a problem with it. I don't think, listening to the message, and I'm glad they played the message. I don't think it was a dig at anyone, but it's all it's all about perception. So that's how Kenya perceived it. I'm glad that Kim got a chance to correct and say, "No, I wasn't trying to dig at anyone. I was just offering this. This is what I thought would be the ideal thing." Um, yeah. So I thought it was a really cute thing. I think she's really finding her niche in the housewives, and I really despise to see people on Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, and other social media outlets. Other social medium. That's the past tense for media. I mean, to the bitch, not the past tense. Bitch. The, that's the plural. Sorry. My bad. Look at me trying to educate somebody and looking a fool. My bad. Shit happens. Play as fuck up. Anyhow. Um. Yeah. I. When people say they don't like Kim and she doesn't fit. I really think she does. Because she's something outside of the norm. She's not really about pro-drama. But she's not about to let you check her either. She ain't no punk bitch. Okay. That's regime, regime. That's Tootie, my nigga. She is Hollywood royalty, quiet as it's kept. Her family has been around for years. Yeah. Anyway, I really did enjoy the brunch session part of it. That was cute. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a whole lot to say. Um, except for after that. After the brunch part... Oh, I am ashy. I am so sorry. It's so rude me to be this ashy. Uh, anyhow, um, Cynthia, my dear, I understand that King is your girlfriend, and she has her own director producer capabilities and but if that's your girlfriend, that's who you desperately want to work with, and you want to give your girlfriend the chance to make that. To make your commercial, just do that. Don't ask for Kim, because you and Kim are on good terms, how, although y'all are not friends, friends like that. Now, in my opinion, Kim does have the more credible resume as far as acting, producing, directing, etc. However, if you want to give your girlfriend, your Judy, your bestie, Kenya, the opportunity to direct your commercial, just do that. Quit trying to pair them together because obviously in every situation they always have some type of friction of some sort, some type of running, some type of uh, miscommunication, and something like that. So stop trying to put them together. Um, in a, from a business aspect, based on what we've seen, I'm, I hope at this point the commercial is produced and will probably air somewhere near or after the next episode when they actually do this. But at this point, from what I've seen, Kim showed up to your meeting that you called for this particular event to 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 pitch ideas about your commercial. She showed up to the event ready, willing, and able. So at that point, if you had two people you were leaning in between and you were going to make a decision that day, your decision should have been Kim. Because she showed up and you seem to have liked her ideas. So it's almost a slap in the face to Kim for you to say, well, I'm still going to meet with her later to see where her ideas are. It almost seems as if you're going to go ahead and override whatever she said to go with your friend. So you might as well just go with your friend. And I respect Kim for saying, I, I normally don't co-produce, but she said at the same time, I'm well-versed and professional enough to never say who I won't work or who I cannot work with because, hey, a check is a check, a coin is a coin, and she needs my coin, okay? But, yeah, you just need to pick somebody up, uh, ma'am, because, like, trying to force them to work together because you think it'll be high or this, that, and the third. We've seen so many times throughout the franchise, throughout the different franchises, how money, business, friends don't mix. So maybe it's a better option for you to go with Kim because y'all are newly acquainted. But hey. Mm. 
I guess we'll find out what really happens on the next episode. I'm kind of all out of stuff to say here about this episode. Maybe I'll get a chance to review the next episode. The doll is trying to get ready for a pageant. So, my mindset is... I, I just... My mindset is I need to be trying to do everything for that. And everything else is extra. Like, this video right now is extra. But I do kind of want to do this, too. So, hey, I'm trying to make room for everything. But, anyhow, at this point, the doll is rambling. Girl, bye. I'll see y'all the next time that I see y'all. Hopefully, it'll be a review for something else. Okay, bye.